evening, Kal Kadosh. The permission of everybody. The times Am Yisrael are going through now are very, very difficult, very, very overwhelming. We all feel, feel the bitterness in the bottom of our hearts. We all feel overwhelmed, broken, shattered. There's a Gemara in Maseret Megillah. Thank you very much. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shakol Nihiyah Bidvaro The Talmud Bavli in Maseret Megillah says 48 Nevi'im Hayu Lehem Le'Israel There are 48 prophets Am Yisrael had very holy prophets, very, very wise people, very intellectual. They knew the entire Tanakh by heart. Yeshaya Navi, Yechezkel ben Buzi, incredible figures of Yirat Shamayim, incredible rabbis. And seven Neviot Tayulem Israel, seven women prophets. They all prophesied, they all said the word of God over to Am Yisrael. It says the Gemara, what they accomplished with their words of rebuking and of inspiring people with words of Torah. If you read the words of Yemiah Navi, he literally poured his heart out to Am Yisrael. One of the famous Pesukim, he says, I see the nation has come to the synagogue, they come to Bet Knesset, they learn and they pray. With their mouth and their lips, they served me, they prayed. But unfortunately, our hearts are far from God. The pasuk concludes. And their fear of me is like someone who's just doing a mundane, robotic act. These are impeccable words of the Navi, Yermia Navi. But says the Gemara that unfortunately there's something that's way better than the words of the Navi. Says the Gemara, Gedola Hasara Tabat, Yoter Mi Arbaim Veshmona Nevi'im Vesheva Nevi'ot Shayu Israel. The removing of the ring of Ahash Verosh when he passed it over to a man, the Rasha, Zerah Malek, and he enabled him to do whatever he wants with Am Israel. That action was greater than anything. That action awoke Am Yisrael. It shook us up to the core. Abu Tai. We've seen videos, we've seen things disgusting. Not even human beings. It's, it's ridiculous what we've seen. Literally videos of people's heads. Innocent little babies. I'm <laughs> prepared from Oshkodesh Elul, 30 days of uplifting, spirituality, praying. Every Jew felt felt a bolt of energy. And Rosh Hashanah, Aser Demet HaShuvah, Yom HaKippurim, Chag HaSukot, and we get to the pinnacle. A day that the Zohar Kadosh says that we sit literally one-on-one -on -one with the Kadosh Baruch Hu. The Zohar Kadosh says about the day of Shmini Atzeret, Man de Ativ be Malka Bilhudoi. Someone who sits in the house of the king alone, one on one. Kol Madebai Shal Veaivle. Whatever you want, ask and I'll give you. What happened? People have seen videos of people's heads being literally sawed off. An enemy that, that's a subhuman. It's not even a human being. It's not even an animal. The Hafez Chaim says, <laughs> The Hafez Chaim says that when Hashem doesn't have Nevi'im to rebuke us and to give us the word of God and to awaken us and tell us what we have to do, why we have to change, how to change, Says the Havetz Raim, then Hashem does 
an earthquake, he does a, he shakes up Am Yisrael with afflictions, with difficulties. When you want to wake someone up who's sleeping, you call his name, maybe he wakes up. But someone who's in a deep slumber, you have to shake him up really hard. Abu Tai Hashem shook us up terribly. He wants us to change. I'm talking to myself, we all have to change. Hafez Chaim says that when he heard a bolt of lightning, he would ask, Tate, what do you want from me? Obviously you want me to change. So we all heard terrible bolts of lightning. If you think for one second, I'm sorry to be so graphic, but think about the people in Gaza right now. Forget the soldiers. Think about the, the hostages, the people that are captive. Young kids, four or five year olds. They're hungry at night. What do they do? They scream, Abba, Ima. Who are they going to scream to? Who are they screaming to? The little kids, little innocent kids, people. If we continue on with our life and we don't change, The Shukhan Aruch writes, Yerot Ta'anit, Keshem Shemitanim Umatri'in Alek Shamim, If God forbid there's a drought in the land of Israel, it doesn't rain. Kach Mitanim Al Shar Hatzarot. The same too we do for any afflictions, any difficulties or tragedies that afflict, God forbid, Am Yisrael. Hare Elu Mitanim Umatri'in Ad Shiyuhamu. You have to fast immediately until Hashem has mercy. Many of us fasted today. A lot of Gdolei Yisrael asked for the Jews of, of Am Yisrael in Diaspora, in Eretz Yisrael, to fast, to do something. Many of us feel, like the Rabbi mentioned, I'm just echoing many things he said. We all feel that what could I do? I'm not in the front lines, I'm not in Gaza. And I'm not in Eretz Yisrael. How many people, if anybody knows people in Israel, people who literally parted from their wives, from their kids with tears, kids that, people that had to go to the front lines, half a million, more. Jews just left everything. They left their families. They left without toothbrushes, without deodorant. They're sleeping on concrete. Baruch Hashem, the Beit Knesset, the Rav Son today donated 30 mattresses. There's still a great shortage, unfortunately. People are sleeping on the concrete floor. They don't have, what my mother-in-law was saying, one of her good friends has two or four sons, I'm not sure, that are in, in that are fighting. And they called crying to their mom, Mima, it's hard for me. All we have to eat is we have canned food. You know what it's like to just sit and eat canned food and, and the terror, the fear, the trepidation that afflicts each and every one of them. It's not easy. You know what God, they've been working for 40 years. These Hamas, they have whole towns beneath the ground. It's Mamash Gehenei Gehenom in Gaza. It's, we don't understand what goes on there, what they've done, what they've planted, what they've, it, it's Mamash. Imagine going into the enemy's home court and any second, God forbid, chas v'shalom, we shouldn't even know. It's crazy to think what they're going through. And like the rabbi mentioned, we are soldiers as well. We might be in the Gola, we're in Diaspora, we're in Miami. But we also have to feel like we are on the front lines. And we have to know, it's not as if we are on the front lines. There are words, beautiful words that Rabbi Yashiv writes in Parashat Matot. The Gemara in Masechet Makot, in Tamud Bavli, in, in the 10th page, the Gemara says, there's a Mizmor 122 in Tehilim. David Amalek says, Shira Ma'alot, Samachti be'omrim li bet Adonai nelech. David Amalek said, I was happy when they told me they're going to go to the house of God. What does that mean? The Gemara asks, what does that even mean? David Amalek was promised and are actually told by Akadosh Baruch Hu that he will not have the merit to build the Beit HaMikdash. Unfortunately, he didn't. He gathered money, he collected for the Kotel HaMaravi from all the poor and peasants of Am Yisrael. And that is the only wall that's left till this day. But he was not allowed to build the Beit HaMikdash because he had blood on his hands. 
But Hashem promised him his son Shalomo HaMelech will build the Beit HaMikdash. So Am Yisrael said, Matai, this is the words of Gmah, Amar David, Ribono Shel Olam, God Almighty, Matai Yamut Zaken Zeh, when will this old man die already? Who are they referring to? David HaMelech. Am Yisrael said, when will David HaMelech die? We're praying for him to die. Says the Gemara, imagine you hear a person wants to kill you or praying for your death, God forbid. You do a restraining order, you move cities, you change your name, you dress up, you do something. You know what David Amelech did when he heard that? What does that mean? I was happy when they told me back that when I left. David Amelech had a smile on his face. And he said, I'm so happy. Look how eager your sons are to build the Beit HaMikdash. They want me dead. Because they know I can't build it, but my son will. Please take me. That's what David Amel prayed. He said, And then a who answers him and tells him, David Amelech, the pleasure that I will receive in the Nachat Ruach, that I will get from the Beit HaMikdash being built, is incredible. It is nearly unmatchable. But there's one thing that is more dear and more precious to me than the Beit HaMikdash being built. And that is the Mizmor in Pei Dali, the 84th Mizmor of Tehilim, that we read every day before Minha. And the Mizmor says, Kitov yom b'hatsarecha me'alef b'charti istofev bevet Elohai midu be'alei resha One day, of you sitting and learning Torah is better than a thousand korbanot she'atid shalomo bincha l'akiv ala mizbeach. That's more precious to me when you sit and you learn Torah. So we do have a weapon. We are IDF soldiers. We fight for Tzva Gana Israel with the Torah Gdosha. The nations of the world are jealous of us. They hate us. They can't stand us. And they call us Amma Sefer, the nation of the book. Because this is a book, it's not just a book. It's literally the blood in our veins. This is who we are. Whether you like it or not, whether you live in orthodox life or not, we all know it. We all feel it. The energy of Am Yisrael now is impeccable, it's incredible. We all feel it. This is what gives us life. This is our life. This is our path in life. The Gemara continues and says about the next verse in this Mizmo. The literal translation is that our feet will stand in the gates of Jerusalem. But the Gemara asks, what does this verse mean? What's the deeper interpretation of this verse? It says the Gemara, Amar Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, B'shut ma omdot ragleinu b'milchama. In what merit do our soldiers stand alive in combat? That's literally the question of the Gemara. That's what the B'mer says, omdot ayu ragleinu. We came out victorious. How? B'shut ma, with what merit? Because of the gates of Jerusalem who sit and learn Torah. And not, on, not literally Jerusalem, any Bet Knesset, in your house, wherever you go, you learn Torah, you follow the ways of Hashem, you go in the ways of the Torah. That is one of the greatest weapons that we have for the nation of Am Yisrael. There's a beautiful lesson, I think, that is also a second message that we have to take with us. Of Koska said beautifully, the morning, there's a few moments in a person's life where they'll never forget where they were when they heard that bad news. And we all know where we were on Shabbat morning, wherever it was, if you're in Israel, if you're in Miami, wherever it was, nobody will forget where they were. I didn't believe it. I said, okay. Some people were talking next to me, like, yeah, stop, let's go. He said, no, there's a war. I find there's been wars before. 
Unfortunately, Hashem Yachem Alai. I literally didn't believe it. And even if it was, okay, it's not the end of the world. But then you hear 50 people at first, and 100, and then 200, and 3, and then Hashem Yachem. And it just kept getting worse and worse. I don't think we'll ever forget that moment where we were, where we were at that very exact moment. Chacham Koskas, the rabbi, spoke beautifully and he said a beautiful mashal that's brought down in the Midrash. That once there was a son, a father, lying on his deathbed. And this father was very sick, seconds before his death. And he had an opportunity to say a few last words to his son. And his ten kids gathered around him. And the dad said, I have one last request for you, my beloved sons. Please do me a favor. Bring me a bamboo stick. The kids ran, they rushed and got him a bamboo, and they bring him one bamboo stick. The father takes the bamboo stick, and he breaks it and cracks it in half. He said, Dad, everything all right? He says, yes. Do me a favor, go get me another bamboo stick. They go, they get the bamboo stick, they come back, and once again the father breaks it. And then a third and a fourth time, and, and ten times the father breaks it. And the kids had no clue what the dad wanted. And said, I'm sorry, I have one last request. Do me a favor, go get me ten bamboo sticks now. The kids went out, they got ten bamboo sticks and they bring it to the father. And the father holds them tight like this, all ten in a bundle. And he said, who's the macho man? Who's the biggest one? Come, try and break it. And the son comes and tries to break it. He doesn't succeed. And they all try. They couldn't break it. The father said, no, you understand? He said, no, dad, what do you want? And the father told the boys, he said, when you guys are alone as individuals, you're breakable. But when we're united, we are unbreakable. Ami said, we're not going to mention, but we all know there's been, a, unfortunately, a past year of terrible things amongst Am Yisrael. Not pointing fingers, we all, we, it happened to all of us. That means that we, I have to work on my Sinat Chinam. We are no one, we have no Zichut, no merit to point and blame anybody for anything for this tragedy that afflicted every single one of us. Other than ourselves. We have no Zichut. Unless you're a Navi or you're God, maybe you could stand up and say whatever you want. But we have no zikhut. We have to know though that Sinat Chinam, we've been suffering for, for 1,954 and counting years since the destruction of the Second Temple. And Chazal, our sages, teach us that Kol Beit HaMikdash And that means that we each and every one of us sitting in this room are affected by this. We have Sinat Chinam in our heart. There's an incredible Gemara I've mentioned many times. In Sanhedrin, on the seventh page, the Gemara says, Shayinu sonim afilu mita shashishim ama enam aspeket. Vikshayinu avim afilu al hudosh al saif. The Gemara means that when there's a couple, a husband and wife, that have sina, they hate each other, God forbid. If we have hatred, even a bed of 60 amot won't be good enough. You could sleep on one end, the wife on the other end, they won't be able to do it, because they hate each other. And says the Gemara, when we have love, we could sit, sleep on a very thin, slim bed. What kind of bed? Chudosh al saif on the blade and the sharpest part of a sword. We'll sleep on it, we'll be okay. That's the pshat of the Gemara. Meaning that you'll deal with it. When there's avat Hashem, when there's, when there's, sorry, when there's avat china, you'll be okay even on the tiniest bed, on a sword. Says the Ben Ishchai, a, a, a mamash amazing interpretation. Says the Ben Ishchai Kadosh, a Ben Yosef Chaim, a very big Chacham in Iraq, from Iraq, about 110 years ago. He says, "Kshayinu sonim, if there's sinat chinam, afilu mita shashishim ama enam aspeket." Where does it say in Tanakh, "A mita that's shishim"? Hina mita to shelishlomo, shishim giborim savivla. Here is the bed of Shalomo Amelech. 
There's 60 warriors surrounding it. They're all holding door, swords and daggers and spears. Ready to go out to war. Says the Midrash of Shir Hashirim, these 60 soldiers are the 60 tractates of the Torah Shabbat, of the Oral Torah, of the Talmud Bavli. Says the Ben Ishchai, Shainu Sonim, if they're Sinat Chinam, the Torah is worthless. Even if you have 60 tractates of Torah, it means nothing. Hashem Yidbarach says, I don't care about your Torah. It's worthless to me if you have Sinat Chinam. If we have Avat Hashem, Afilu al Chudosh and Saif, you could literally, the enemies could come and try to do anything to you, they won't touch you, they won't lay a finger on you. They have no zechut to do so. Because we have Avat Israel. Unfortunately, we learn the hard way. Israel. How much Avat Israel has been in these past few days? I remember. About four years ago, I sat in a doctor's office. My daughter was born with a medical condition and we had to raise a lot of money. It's a very expensive drug. Many of you know this story. And we sat in a doctor's office, my wife and I and my daughter, and seven doctors were in the room about. And the doctor, we asked him what we can do to raise the money, what we can do to get the drug, to get the medication. He said, honestly, quite honestly, I'm sorry to tell you this, but the insurance didn't cover it. They denied you three times. There's not much you could do. You can't get free trials, that's it. <laughs> and then I asked the doctor, the doctor, what if we want to buy the medication? And he chuckled, he smiled, he said, you have $2.2 million. I won't forget it, this doctor looked at me and I said, I have a rich father, I have a wealthy dad. And literally he smirked, laughed, chuckled, giggled, looks right and left, and the doctors start talking, who's his dad? And then when I answered, they laughed at me. I told them my father is Hashem I didn't say it that way, I said my father is God Almighty and he's very, very wealthy. And they literally laughed at us. And Baruch Hashem, thank God, with great mercy from Borei Olam, and impeccable Achdut of Am Yisrael, 24,000 Jews, across the world donated within four or five days. And Baruch Hashem she received their medication literally the last day before her second birthday. About a year later, I was asked to speak at the Agudat Yisrael convention. And when I was there, they shared the story on a, on a, a big board. There's many, many people there. And I spoke for one minute. And this is what I said. I said, if I had known then what I know now, they saw it video, they heard that story and stored a clip that was recorded, then I walked on stage. It was a very, very emotional moment. And I said to them, if I had known then what I know now, I think I would have told the doctor another thing as well. I would have told him I have a big brother. I have a brother that loves me. And they'd ask, who's your brother? And I'd tell him, I'm Yisrael Chai. How amazing are your kids, Am Yisrael? How many people rent, literally buy out airplanes, send them filled with equipment? Soldiers in Saad are literally begging, pleading for tzitziot. There's yeshiva bachers in Eretz Yisrael. They're sitting in yeshiva all day tying tzitziot. They don't have enough tzitziot. There's so many soldiers who want to wear tzitzit. There's a lack of equipment. They don't have bodyguard bulletproof vests. Or tzitziot. And they're begging, they're pleading, please send us tzitziot. And literally everyone in Am Yisrael, if you remember the, the terrible thing that happened here in Surfside, how much achdut was it on this street? Imagine the cooking. That's going on now in every city in Israel. People are cooking for every city. People are literally running back and forth, supporting, buying whatever they can, donating their last penny for Am Yisrael. Mi kam chai Yisrael. This is achdut. This is what we have to do and live like this our whole life. We can't wait for the blood of hundreds, not a thousand, or over a thousand already, they say, of our brothers that was literally spilled. Levatala Hashem Hashem in Kom Damam. 
Why do we have to wait for such an act? We have to change, Abotai. We have to work on Avat Yisrael. If anybody in this room has somebody, another Jew in the world, that they have beef with, that they have troubles with, so that's it. Get done, get rid of it. Call him up. Say, I, I'm sorry. But I, he, it was his fault. Doesn't matter. The, literally the, the most anti leftist and rightist and the, everybody is one. Do you think that one of the terrorists walked into one of those camps, one of the villages and asked, wait a second, are you a leftist or rightist? They didn't care. You're a Jew. That's it. Doesn't matter, Sfaradi, Ashkenazi, Litai, Hasidi, you're Jewish. That's it. You don't have a number on your thing like Hitler put, but it's in, it's in your DNA. We are Am Yisrael, and we have to change. We have to work on Avat Yisrael. I'll just conclude with the last beautiful statement I heard from Rav Soma Farhi. In Parashat Shoftim, there was many videos sent of many of the commanders leading different types of plugot, their, their groups going into Aza or even on the borders or going into different places and different cities. And these people, these commanders, tzaddikim, very righteous people, even if they're not religious, they're Yudim, they're literally there. You see the achdut that they have, the soldiers are singing, Am Yisrael, Chai. You see these videos, you cry. I honestly don't even have appetite. These days I can't eat. From my, my gut feeling, it, it's everything, that over. it's so overwhelming. And you see that in the middle of all this fear, imagine what we're, we're fear, we're, we feel scared in Miami. What, what do you have in Miami? Okay, we feel a little bit of fear. Imagine literally being on the border of Aza. Imagine having to go into it. Little, not the lion's den. I don't even know what it is. And there's a commander who has to boost these guys. He has to inspire them. He has to give them words of chizuk, words of inspiration. If we look at a chapter, four psukim in the Torah, the, the Torah tells us how exactly that commander should speak and what he should say. It's a very, very small passage. But there's a lot that lies in this deep message. The Torah says in Parashat Shoftim, in the 20th chapter, in the first verse, Ki When you go out to battle against your enemies, sus varechev, and you see a horse and a chariot, Am rav mimcha, a great nation, obviously not great in their actions, but they outnumber you greatly. Lo mehem, says the Torah. You shall not fear them. Mitzvah taseh from the Torah. Don't be scared of them. Ki Adonai Elohecha imach. Hashem, your God is with you. Hamalcha me'eretz Mitzrayim. He took you out of Egypt. And he overcame the Egyptians after being afflicted for 210 years. And when you get close to the battlefield, when you're literally about to go attack, pause for a second. The Torah says that there was a Kohen called the Kohen Mashuach Milchama. He was anointed like the Kohen Gadol. He was the second to the Kohen Gadol. And this Kohen was anointed the same process with the Shem and Amishcha. Mitzvah Taseh, the Torah commands this Kohen to stand up. Picture him getting on one of his brother's shoulders, getting on the chair, standing up high, and speaking with his whole heart, literally in the seconds before walking to, to go face the, the cruel, vicious enemies. And says the Torah, two psukim he had to say. That's it. Listen to these words. V'amar alehem, Shema Yisrael. Listen, Am Yisrael. Says Rashi, what does it mean, Shema Yisrael? All you have is the mitzvah of Kiyat Shema. Your weapon when you go in is Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Six words. But they're not just six regular words. They're six words that literally is the line 
that lies be beneath the blood and the veins of every single Jew in the Holocaust. There was one of the Nazis in Machshimo that sat in a meeting and he, he said, What? Tell me something about these Jews. And he said the Pasuk Shema Yisrael, the Nazi, a Goya Nazi. He said, How do you know this Pasuk? He said, What do you mean? I heard it millions of times. He says, How? He says, When they were burning to death, that's all they would scream. These words is the legacy of Am Yisrael. This is who we are. The nation of Hashem Yitbarach, of God Almighty. Says the Torah, the Kohen will continue, You're going out to war against your enemies. Don't let your heart be faint. Don't, have, don't be weak-hearted. Don't be afraid. You should not panic. And you should not be broken before your enemies. And then the Quran concludes with one last pasuk. That was the first one. Because Hashem, your God, is there with you. To go fight for you. To go allow you to prevail over your enemies, to be victorious in war. These were the beautiful words, the message that the Kohen had to give to Pesukim. And that's it. But these are two great Pesukim, Rabotai. This is who we are. Through these past days, we all have, unfortunately, social media. We should not have it, but we do. And we use it many times for good things, but others for terrible things. And one of the times that we should definitely limit it, ourselves watching these horrific videos and these very cruel videos, this is literally the, the main tactic of Hezbollah, of Hamas, of all of the terror organizations to fight a psychologic war, to fill us with fear to fill us with trepidation, to fill us with shivering, and to break our spirits. Rav Chaim Yivalajan writes in Nefesh HaChaim that there's a segula, that when Am Yisrael say, when they have this segula, nothing can touch you. And that is the segula of En Od Milvado. There is none other than Hashem Barach. Unfortunately, we show even our kids our weaknesses. How many of us feel scared? I'm so scared, I'm terrified, I don't know what to do. What message are we portraying? If our soldiers in the front line of combat can't do that, so here we shouldn't do that either. We have to be mechazek our emunah in Hashem Barach. Hashem loves us. And everything He's doing is just a wake-up call. It's out of pure love from Borei Olam. We don't know why. But we have to rephrase the question. It's what does He want from us? And we all know what we have to work on. We have to change. We have to wake up. We have to be mechazek be'emuna. David Amir said, Sakota le'roshi be'yom nashek. You should be like a schach, a sukkah to my head in the day of war. The Mephashim asked, what do you mean? With just your head? What about your body, your legs? What's going to help that your head's protected? Because everything starts here. If your head is protected, if your head is on straight, and you understand Borei Olam is with us, then that is the greatest weapon we have. To be relaxed, to be calm, I know it's difficult. But we have to work on our emunah, we have to work on our chizuk, and be mitchazek in Torah and mitzvot. Bezad Hashem, we should have rechamim gedolim from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Just to conclude, Abutai, we're going to say a few mizmorei teilim, to pray for the refuah of all Kholam Yisrael, Bezad Hashem, and the protection of all our soldiers in the front lines. We're going to do our in five minutes when we finish. The rabbi is asked to read three mizmorim. It's 121, then 130, and 142. Ask of all the neshamot of the Jews that were massacred for being Jewish, that are definitely in Gan Eden, 
they should pray for the Fua and the Chaim of all our soldiers, of all of the Jews in Am Yisrael, in Aza, in Eretz Yisrael, in the entire world, Mizmo 121. Shil ha-ma'alot esarenai el ha'arim Me'ayin yavo ezri Ezimeim Adonai Oseh shamayim v'aretz Al yitel namod v'aglecha Al yanum shomrecha Tine lo yanum ve'lo yishan Shomer Yisrael Adonai shomrecha Adonai tzirecha al yad yaminecha Yom ha-mashem es le'akeka וירח בלילה, אדוני ישמורך מכל רע, ישמור את נפשך, אדוני ישמור את צאתך ובואיך, מעתה ועד עולם. מזמור 130. שיר המעלות, ממעמקים קראתיך אדוני, אדוני שמע בקולי. תהיה נא עוזר הקשובו לכל דחנוני עם עוונות תשמור יא אדוני מי יעמוד כי מכעס אליך למען תברא קיוויתי אדוני כי ביתה נפשי והתבורחלתי נפשי לאדוני כפי שומעים לבוקר שומעים לבוקר יחל ישראל אל אדוני כי אם אדוני החסד, והרבה עמו פדות, והוא יבדה את ישראל מכל עוונותיו. משכיל לדוד בהיותו בנערה תפילה, כל יל אדוני יזעק, כל יל אדוני אלפנן, אשפוך לפניו שיחי. שרתי לפניו אגיד, והתעטף עלי רוחי, ואתה ידעת נתיבתי, באורח זו עליך, תם נופח לי. הבית ימין הוא רב, אין לי מכיר, אבל מנוס ממני, אין דורש לנפשי. זעקתי אליך, אדוני. אמרתי, אתה מחסיד, חלקי בארץ החיים, הקשיב על רינתי. כי דלותי מאוד, אצילני מרודפי, כי המצומי מהני, הוציאה ממסגר נפשי, להודות את שמך, ויכתירו צדיקים, כי תגמול עליי. We're gonna just accept all my chut shamayim, בעזרת השם, repeat after me, נעשה פסוקים, and repeat together. שמע ישראל, אדוני אלוהינו. אדוני אחד, אדוני הוא האלוהים, אדוני הוא האלוהים, אדוני הוא האלוהים, אדוני In chapter 119 in the book of Tehidim, 
in the letter Lamed. In the brown books, it's page 266. The Rashash writes that this Pasuk that we say on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we say it 12 times, and, it, and we should have in mind, Leolam Adonai, Hashem, this is the name of mercy of Hashem, Devarecha is the harsh decrees that are waiting, God forbid, in the Shemaim, that if, even if they were decreed and waiting to come down, Nitzav Bashamayim, they should stay in the heaven, they shouldn't come down here. Le'olam Adonai Devarecha Nitzav Bashamayim Le'olam Adonai Devarecha Nitzav Bashamayim means that we call out to you with our entire heart. Please answer us, Hashem. We will accept your mitzvot. We will go in your ways. Karati becholev Anem Adonai Hukecha Etzora Karati becholev Anem Adonai Hukecha Etzora
מקו כל מבקשי רעתנו, אחר עצתם, וקלקל מחשבותם, ולא תעשה מידיהם תושייה, כמו שנאמר, וצועצה ותופר, דברו דבר ולא יקום, כי עמנו אל, אחר עצת גויים, וקלקל מחשבותם, חלבם תבוא בליבם, וקשתותם תישברנה, אנא אדוני, ימונה אחניך עלינו ועל כל עמך ישראל, עמוד נא מכיסא דין, אשר על כיסא רחמים, תגלץ לנו לפני ולפנים משורת הדין, תוותר מעלינו כל גזרות קשות ורעות, תגזור עלינו גזרות טובות, ישועות ונחמות, למען אחניך, ותקרע רוע גזר דיננו, ויקרדו לפניך זכויותינו, קום עזת אדם ודנו על חסדיך. אנא אדוני, שמור והגן על עבדיך, צום ראיתך, הנמצאים בשגיאה בעזה, הגן על חיילי הצבא וכוחות הביטחון, עד